What is up ladies and gents, welcome to my TBC Disc Arena Beginner Guide. This guide is going to include things like race, professions, talents, stats, gems, enchants, uh, a comp tier list, some beginner macros and the add-ons that I use. So if you're interested in any of those topics, uh, then make sure you continue watching. I spent a bunch of time on this guide and it's been a learning process for me as well as I haven't played TBC for like 12, 13 odd years until starting again recently in the beta. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video and I hope you learn something because I definitely did. So for race, you've pretty much got two options. For Horde, you're going to be going Undead and for Alliance, you want to be playing with Dwarf. Dwarf probably being the strongest Priest race in the game since you get Stone Form, Desperate Prayer, and Chastise. The main benefits of Dwarf are obviously the survivability. Stone Form provides you with a Poison Dispel on a 3 minute cooldown, which otherwise you wouldn't have. So it's really strong for removing things like Crippling and Wound. When you get low against Rogue Teams, you can also use it in conjunction with Desperate Prayer for an easy top off. Chastise has a really short cooldown of 30 seconds, plus a really short global afterwards, rather than normal 1.5 seconds. This makes it really versatile, and you can use it in a multitude of different ways, including you know just straight up kiting, keeping people in place, spell pushback, and just combo with the damage when you're trying to kill somebody. On Undead, you're going to be getting Touch of Weakness, Will of the Forsaken, and Devouring Plague. The main strength of Undead, of course, being Will of the Forsaken, providing you to not only a fear breaker, but five seconds of immunity to fear. Touch of weakness is generally used as buff fodder, while devouring plague is usually used in conjunction with inner focus due to its high mana cost. Yeah. The other races aren't generally a good option. Their racials are a lot weaker. Potentially you can play troll if you're exclusively playing with a mage or a warlock, but undead just offers a lot more versatility in the other classes that you can play with. For professions, it's relatively clear cut. If you want pure arena value, you can just go for enchanting and engineering. The engineering will provide you with the 4K absorb belt that you can use if you're about to die. This is particularly strong on undead. Enchanting will provide you with the 20 healing enchant on rings. Engineering actually gets stronger later on as well with goggles being available and rocket boots. However, the rocket boots no longer do damage, so you can't use them to break CC anymore like back in the day. If you're doing some PvE, you can also potentially go for tailoring instead of engineering. However, this won't give you any value in arena since the items don't have good defensive stats. So the standard PvP spec for Disc Priest at the moment doesn't deviate that much. And we start off with five points in Unbreakable Will. Resisting a stun can be really, really game-breaking, but also any sort of silence uh, and fear as well can really change the course of the game and put you ahead. Next, you want five out of five in Silent Resolve. Dispel Resistance is really, really important as a Priest since a lot of your healing is going to come through Shield, Prayer of Mending, and Renew. And people are going to be trying to dispel these as much as possible, so having some resistance on these is really important, along with your other buffs, which you will be reapplying with rank 1 as protection. Generally, you skip Imp Fortitude because it disp gets dispelled early on anyway. But Improved Power Word Shield is really important, so we take 3 points, as is Martyrdom. Casting is generally quite hard in TBC when you have people on you, and things like Martyrdom to make you have a chance to resist Kick or Interrupt while casting are really, really valuable. Inner focus is obviously a no-brainer, and we take meditation as well, as this makes our spirit provide us 30% of the mana regen while casting. We'll talk a little bit more about the 5-second rule later. Next, you want 3 points in absolution. As I said, dispelling is really important, and you're going to be doing a lot of it. Uh, and this includes mental agility, which obviously affects dispel as well, but also pom, shield, and renew. Next, you want two out of two in mana burn. This allows the spell to be used a lot more reliably, reducing the cast time by one second. Next, we take divine spirit. 
while providing this with a nice bit of extra regen, this is also counted as another buff that you can potentially rebuff with rank 1 later on in the game. Next we take 5 out of 5 mental strength. This gives us access to PI, but also increasing maximum mana is important. Mana is really, really valuable in Burning Crusade, and you're going to go Uma a lot more than you're used to in Shadowlands. Obviously we take Power Infusion as well. It also reduces the mana cost of spells by 20%, so often you want to use it early on in the game when you're purging. Next we take 3 out of 3 Focused Will. This is purely for defensive purposes. Next we're going to take 2 out of 2 Focused Power, and while we should be hit capped anyway via statting for 3% hit, the reduction in cast time by 1 second makes this a really valuable talent. Next we're going to go 5 out of 5 Reflective Shield, and this is something that wasn't actually meta in the original Burning Crusade, but has recently on private servers been understood to be really, really valuable. Finally, we're going to take Pain Suppression, which is our goal here, and it's important to note that Pain Suppression is a little bit different on Burning Crusade compared to on Retail. Uh, you cannot use it while stunned, however it also reduces the chance that you can be dispelled by 65%. So in conjunction with Silent Resolve, this brings us up to around 85% Dispel Resistance. So you can also use it to protect buffs if you need to. This is really important sometimes when playing with a mage. Now we go into Holy and we're going to put two points into Healing Focus. This helps to reduce some of the interruption on casting via damage. Next we put three points in Imp Renew. As I said earlier, Renew is really important and strong in TBC. And then this point... We will spec slightly differently depending on if we're playing Dwarf or Undead. If you're playing Undead, you'll likely want to put 5 points in Spell Warding. Because Undead is a lot squishier, you have a lot more chances to die to things, uh, especially double DPS as Undead since you don't have Stoneform and you don't have Desperate Prayer to survive. Spell Warding will help a lot with this. If you're playing Dwarf, then you can actually be a little bit more greedy and put 5 points in Divine Fury. This allows you to get more smites off and more great heals off during the course of the game. Finally, we're going to put a point into Holy Nova. Don't underestimate Holy Nova, it's really strong. While you can use rank 1 to get things out of stealth, uh, obviously you can use it on things like Vanish as well to stop reopeners from Rogue, where you can't do this in Shadowlands anymore. Uh, the max rank is also really valuable. If you're in trouble, you can actually use the max rank for a few globals until you get something like Shield or Palm again to avoid having to cast if they have kicks up. And this can actually keep you alive. The healing on it is not insignificant. The final point we want to put in Holy is going to be 1 into Blessed Recovery, and this is purely to provide buff protection. This will proc and it will count as a magic buff, so if you're being purge spammed, it will eat one of the spells. Now, we have two points left over. These generally go into Enlightenment. It's generally up to the player, but Enlightenment is overall the strongest two points that you can spend here. Stat distribution actually isn't that complicated in TBC from an ideology standpoint. You want to get 3% spell hit, and this is going to reduce the chances of your spells missing. You have actual a total of 4% chance to miss on an equal level PvP player, and you can't remove the last 1%, so you go for 3% spell hit. After that, you want approximately 300 resilience. That's a decent amount for Season 1, and it's going to stop you getting one-shot by most things before you can react. After that, generally you want to be pushing as much spirit as possible with some MP5 where you can't get spirit. Generally, Healing isn't something that you should actively be going for, it's more a result of the gear that you can obtain. And the limiting factor for you in Arena is going to be your regen and how much mana you have over the course of the game. Spirit is the best value stat for this. So there are a few different gems that you can actually pick up in Burning Crusade uh, before the epic gems become available later on from Black Temple. Your main options for yellow are the Sublime Mystic Dawnstone, Durable Fire Opal, and Great Dawnstone. Now, the reason the Great Dawnstone is so good is it provides you with a source of hit. You can actually take three of them and then enchant your gloves with hit, and this will get you to hit cap. 
So generally your yellow slots will be taken up by this. If you do have any extra, however, you can go for the Durable Fire Opal or the Sublime and Mystic Dawnstone, and they're both really good value in terms of stats. If you haven't got access to these, haven't done the dungeons, haven't got the drops, then you can get a Mystic Dawnstone, which is really strong too. For reds, you gen generally want the Healing Spirit Hybrids. There is also a Royal Tanzanite available. Arguably, this is better. Depends on who you ask. If you spend a lot of time in combat, then it's superior to the, uh, the Purified Shadow Pearl for sure. If you spend a lot of time regening, then the Purified Shadow Pearl actually pulls ahead. So three options there for the reds. For the blue, you just want to go for an eight spirit. There are no general better options. Spirit being the most valuable stat that you can really go for once you've hit your targets for other stats. There will be links to all the different gems and their drop locations in the description. So again, the enchants are relatively simple. There are not many different choices to be made. The main two being whether or not you go for your hit on your helm or on your gloves. If you go for it on gloves, then you end up losing about 35 healing. If you go for it on helm, you lose around 13 healing. Uh, however, you lose the seven MP5 as well. Uh, generally, I've opted to go for the hit on gloves as opposed to on helm so that you lose less regen. Other than helm and gloves, Cloak, you go for the Spell Penetration. This allows you to sometimes negate Dispelling Mark of the Wild in order to hit Fears, uh, and negates any racial shadow resistance. Chest, you go for the Resilience, as it's the most valuable in terms of stats. Braces, you go for Superior Healing. Shoulders, you go for the 33 Healing, 11 Spell Damage, 4 MP5 uh, from Alder. The Scryer's equivalent is relatively similar, so you can go for that too if you decide to go for Scryer. Legs, you go Golden Spell Thread. Boots will be Boar's Speed for that extra move speed uh, with some stamina thrown in. Very valuable. Weapon, obviously Major Healing. And then if you're playing Enchanting, then you should go for the 20 Healing on Rings. Most of the pre-arena abyss is very similar to the post-arena abyss with a lot of the items coming from the raid or dungeons. The main differences being the main set pieces uh, are the honor ones instead of the ones bought with arena points and the weapons are from PVE. If you can get your hands on these PVE items, they will help you a lot over the course of the arena season since you'll be using them for a long time. Generally, the PvP set lacks a lot of the regen that you need, and this is where the PvE items really shine. First of all, we're starting with the light collar of the Incarnate, which is probably the best helm available to you uh, by a significant margin, just due to the amount of regen that it has on it in combination with other decent stats. As I said before, the, uh, the arena gear does not have anywhere close to this level of regen. Next, we're just going for the standard honor neck. Uh, since we do still need to maintain a good level of resilience, we're going for the honor shoulders, uh, and we're gonna be going for two piece satin and two piece Mooncloth to try and bolster our resilience as much as possible, since in the pre-arena set, it's quite low. We're going for the stainless cloak of the pure hearted on the cloak, again, due to good stats and decent regen the Sergeant's Cloak is generally not worth it due to low resilience and low other stats. For chest, we obviously want the Mooncloth Vestments. No regen on this piece, but really good, uh, good resilience and stamina. For braces, you can opt to go for the PvP braces here if you want some more resilience, or you can go for Bands of Indwelling from Karazhan if you want to get some more other stats, healing and regen. For weapon, I would say Crystal Heart Pulse Staff, or you can go for the Mace from Prince, uh, Light's Justice, and the Offhand from Morose. 
This is going to provide you with a decent amount of healing while also having a good amount of mana regen, stamina, and intellect. Next, we move on to the Grand Marshal's Satin Gloves. And this is the second part of the Satin 2 set. Next, we have the Marshal's Dreadweave Belt, which is actually really strong. Doesn't uh, have much less stats in general than the PvE belts, the PvE counterparts. Just dropping that little bit of regen, but really has a lot of resilience on it. So uh, this is a, a key item. Next, we're going for the Grand Marshal's Mooncloth Legs. This is the second part of the Mooncloth set for that double 35 resilience. And then we have another PvE piece on boots because they have insane regen on. This is a really, really strong piece. Uh, and these are significantly better than the PvE, uh, the PvP boots that are available. Then rings, we're going a double PvE ring because the Band of Salvation from PvP is not available in the first season. So we have the Rep ring from Karazhan here. And then Naru Light Warden's Band, I believe this is from the quest uh, for Magtheridon. Uh, and then for trinkets, we're going to have Bangle. Just a solid regen trinket all around. Um, and then obviously the Medallion of the Alliance. Providing a small amount of resilience. And the Soul Wand of the Aldor to finish it off. The other option here being the Hit Wand from Shade of Aran, but it's a lot harder to obtain. So I thought I'd keep this list somewhat realistic and put the Soul Wand on there instead. As I said before, the differences are not that great in the post arena set. We've just got the Gladiators upgrade on the Satin, the Mooncloth Robe, Satin Gloves, and Mooncloth Legs. And then we have the Weapon Upgrades, Gladiator Salvation, Gladiator Reprieve, and the Touch of Defeat. And this generally bolsters our resilience a fair amount uh, while we maintain the regen from all the PvE pieces from before. So next, I want to talk about the tier list, the comps that you can play and how strong they are. And we're going to start with 2v2 and the S tier which is going to be Priest Rogue, Priest Mage, and Priest Warlock. Now the Rogue should be Shadow Step, the Mage should be Frost, and the Warlock should be SLSL. And these comps are all really strong, uh, Priest Mage having a lot of control, Priest Warlock having a lot of longevity, uh, and Priest Rogue just being super, super well synergized in general. Uh, Rogue has a lot of peels for the Priest, which makes it really strong into double DPS, um, but also against things like warrior teams um, and even other teams like Priest Mage where you, you have a lot more lockdown available as the rogue. Priest Mage, obviously, you can reset with sheep a lot in TBC as not every healer has dispel. And the mage provides a lot of control for the priest to assist with damage and to burn. The Priest Warlock being probably the best comp, I would say, uh, where it's pretty much immune to double DPS teams and is really, really strong against all of the other meta comps. The A-list, the A tier will be Priest Warrior and Priest Hunter. Uh, both Warrior and Hunter start off a little bit weaker due to lower resilience levels early on in season one and two. Uh, but as the seasons go on, these classes get a lot stronger. Priest Warrior generally does not work with an, un an undead priest. It's a lot stronger with a dwarf priest because the warrior doesn't have that many, many peels available for you. Uh, and again, with Priest Hunter, Hunter's obviously lacking the defensives, really do need the extra resilience to survive. In 3v3, we've got Rogue, Warlock Priest, Rogue Mage Priest, Warlock Mage Priest, and Warlock Resto Druid Priest, the double healer Warlock. And... Again, the Warlocks will always be SL, and the Rogues will always be Step, and the Mages will always be Frost. These are like the meta specs right now. In the A tier, we have Warrior Resto Druid Priest and Hunter Resto Druid Priest, and Hunter is usually Survival.
Currently, I'm using very similar macros on TVC as I am on retail. You can reference them in the description. There'll be a link to all my retail macros. Uh, generally, I've just changed the uh, the ordering and which abilities I have paired. So right now I have a help harm macro on shield uh, and that's accompanied by pain. Then I have renew and devouring plague. I have prayer of mending and mind blast. Flash heal and smite. And finally, holy fire and greater heal. And that's the help harm macros. I have the usual death macro, same as on retail where it deaths the nearest target uh, if I don't have one already. And then we just have standard arena one to three chastise. I'm planning on doing an arena one to three dispel. And then additionally, we have a few scripts uh, to improve quality of life, such as class, colored nameplates, nameplate distance, that sort of thing. So I will include all of these macros in the description if you're interested. So this is what my general add-on setup is going to look like. Obviously, we've got a little bit of overlap here, but we obviously won't have all of these DRs running at the same time usually, so this won't be an issue. However, we have big debuffs here, Gladi here, which is the replacement for Gladius X, uh, and it's constantly in development. We had Omnibar, which is tracking my kick cooldowns, CS, uh, Earthshock, that sort of thing. And then we have the party ability bars over here. This add-on most likely is going to get an update in the near future, but I will include all of these add-ons and their profiles uh, available to subs if you go and check out my Twitch stream. If you want to download all these add-ons yourself, I'll put the link in the description. All right, ladies and gents, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found something useful. I hope you got what you were looking for. If you like the video, you know what to do. Thank you very much for watching.